Praise the Lord. I want to announce to you the possibility of everyone, without exception, becoming a star. Amen. And you, today, the power of God will come upon your life. Amen. Wherever you are, how low you may be, the Lord is going to lift you to the highest point in Jesus' name. Amen. Impact for prevailing stars. The Lord will impact your life. Amen. And you will impact the lives of, I didn't say thousands, millions of people. Amen. In this generation, in Jesus' name. Amen. What are you there? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, impart everyone. The young, the older, the students, those who are out of school, the coppers, the young adults, everyone without exception. Even the mothers and the fathers who are here, Lord, I pray, Lift everyone up in Jesus' name. Amen. That we will see there's a star in that person there. Amen. A star in that man there. Amen. A star in that woman there. Amen. And I pray that star will shine forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Here at the Alpha location. Everywhere where we're connected together, Lord, in every nation, resolve for a million stars. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. You must give another amen. amen. The Lord perform it in your life. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're talking about stars. We're talking about stars in our world. We're talking about stars in your world, wherever you are. All the people around you, the globe around you, the world around you, they will soon see that uplifted star. How do we come up and show the people how do we demonstrate that the Lord has given us the grace that will become a profitable star, a prevailing star, a purposeful star, a progressing star, a perfect star? The galaxy of our world in the environment where God has placed us. I'm talking to you on living like profitable stars in our world. There's a difference between our world and the world. Our world is our world. The world is the wide world. But in our world where we live, in our world where we operate, in our world where we carry out our assignment in our world, in our profession, in our world, in our vicinity, in our world, the Lord will make you a profitable star. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about stars, there are stars in heaven, there are stars on earth, there are stars forever, there are Stars in the now. And in the now is what we are talking about. Daniel chapter 12. We are looking at verse 3. It says, They that the wise hold on. The wise people, the foolish people. The foolish people that do not think of the future. The foolish people that do not think of the consequence of their actions. The foolish people that leave their destiny behind them and their chasing shadows. But the wise, the wise that have their eyes to see. 
their minds to think, their hearts to plan, the wise that are going in the in the a kind of direction that the Lord is saying, go there, go there, go there, and the Lord will lead you to that peak in your life in Jesus' name. The wise shall shine. The foolish don't shine. The wayward don't shine. The people that don't have oil in their lamp, they don't shine. The people that move with the crowd and they do not understand, I'm here to do something. I'm here to be something. I'm here to go somewhere. I'm here to achieve. The foolish, they don't, they don't talk about achievement, about action, about attitude. The foolish do not think about anything they do on purpose, but... The wise are the people that shine in the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn, they that turn, <laughs> you know, if you never turn, and you're going on that mischievous way all your life, they never turn. The people that, the way they are today is the way they were five years ago. And the way they'll be five years' time is the way they, were, they are today. They never turn. They do that dumb thing. They go that bad way. And they go in the direction that has never made anybody a star in the thousands of years the world has been and they continue they, co they never turn but i have people here today you turn i said you turn you turn upward you turn forward you turn positive your turn transform. It's the people that turn. Before you can turn other people, you have to turn uh, yourself. If you are a person going the same direction and you have never turned, uh, how can you tell another person to turn? It's the people that turn. It's the people that have turned from the bad way and they're going the direction, the right way. They are the people that can now turn uh, other people and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. I am one of them. I am one of them. You will be in Jesus' name. Look at that word stars. I could point to stars up there in the night. I can point to heroes around us. I can Turn to experts in this field, in that field, but we turn to the stars we have record of in the Bible. The stars, I know you know the spelling, let me spell for you S T A R S. Say that with me S T A R S. Pronounce it now, one word. S for Samuel. T for Timothy. A for Andrew. R for Ruth. S for Saul. Saul of Tatos. No doubt in your mind, those people in their time, in their generation, in their world, was stars. They left the principles behind. What did they do? How did they live? That made them come to stardom in their lives. Are those principles transferable? Can I take that principle, that passion, that purpose of mind? Can I take that past? that led to their glory. Can I transfer them to myself? Yes, I can. Can you take the principles by which Samuel, Timothy, Andrew, Ruth, Saul, can you take the principles they applied in their lives and become like them and even go beyond them? Say, I can. 
Say that, I can. I can. Say that again, I can. I can. When you look at anyone, and then you say, well, that's him. I cannot. You eliminate yourself. You are the one. God counts you in. You are the one counting yourself out. Looking at my own background, I never knew. I'm talking about, let's say, for example, now, 80 years ago, long time. 70 years ago, long time. 60 years ago, long time. I looked around me. I looked at my world. I looked inside. I looked around. I looked everywhere. I never knew that I could take the principles of those who became stars and applied in my life. So, those many years, I'll say, that's him. I cannot. That's her. I cannot. One day, a challenge came to me. Why do you say you cannot when they could? There's a God in heaven that can lift you up, raise you up to their level and beyond their level. I said, is that so? And the Lord showed me. And I now said, I can. The day I changed, the day I turned from I cannot to I can, a new journey began. I thought you'd say good amen for me. Yeah. Now for you, the day you change from I cannot, my family doesn't have the resources, and there is no hero in my history. But you know that God can begin with you. And he will begin with you. Yeah. And now instead of carrying on and instilling in yourself, I cannot, you know, wake up today. I said wake up today. And you say, I can. You say, I can. You say, I can. And when you say that, you keep on saying that, saying that, saying that, I can. I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No matter who you are. No matter your level now, no matter where you are now, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. But looking then at living like profitable stars in our world. Point number one is talking about Samuel early. Preparation like Samuel for service. Point number two is talking about Timothy, earnest pursuit like Timothy for our task. Number three is for Andrew, essential priorities of Andrew and his attitude. Number four is talking about Ruth. Is the exemplary passion of Ruth for repossession. Number five is talking about Saul, the extraordinary perseverance of Saul towards significance. Look at number one. Number one, we're talking about the principles that held Samuel that he became a star. We're looking at the life of Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Reading from verse 26. Samuel chapter 2 verse 26. And the child Samuel grew on. Nobody becomes a star 
without growing. If you still have the child, the childlike life, the childish attitude, and the childish behavior, and there is no growth, there is no growth, no growth in action, no growth in attitude, no growth in lifestyle, no growth in activity. And there's no way we can become stars if we remain at the same level. It says the child Samuel grew on, grew on, not just that he grew full stop. The people, they grow full stop. They don't grow in their search, in their reading, in their activity, in their profession. They grow full stop. He grew on and he was in favor both of the Lord and also with men. Now you know the history of the man. I don't need to read all those uh, many verses but what I get from here Samuel became steadfast as a star by his separation from evil characters. You know, you know where he lived and you know Ophni and Phinehas and you know the, the terrible corrupt evil environment number one Samuel with the S of his name, separation from evil characters, a advancing in early consecration. He consecrated his life. Mama told Samuel, before you were born, I was barren. And then I went to God and said, God, give me a man child. If you give me that man child, I will devote him to you. And the mother passed the consecration unto Samuel. And he became a consecrated boy at early age. And he advanced in early consecration. M, moving up without a sneering Corruption. Uh, there was so much corruption in the place where he was that if he just stood there, stationary, all the corruption was splashed on him. He had to go on moving, had to go on uh, walking, had to go on uh, keeping the separation between him uh, and the evil community. You know, if we're going to move on like Samuel, and become a shining star, bright star, prevailing star, profitable star, progressive star. We have to move up without a sneering corruption. Look at the youth there in the name Samuel upholding his engraved conviction. We just heard about conviction and that Samuel no matter the day of the week, no matter the association around him, he upheld the conviction that had been engraved in his heart. You know, if you're going to be a shining star, there ought to be a conviction planted in you at conversion. And you say, this is the direction I will now go. And that conviction is engraved in your heart. And it cannot be rubbed off by any dick and hurry, by those who come, by those who go in your new class, in your new institution, in your new place of work. You carry your conviction there. It's engraved in your heart. And you say, no matter what the people around here do, no matter what the people around here, what they practice, I come here with conviction, engraved conviction. And you uphold that. If Samuel will have that E, and it's enduring all and every contradiction. Enduring all and every contradiction. The people that will come around you and they'll try to contradict you. 
They may be forceful, they may be gentle, they may be methodical, they may be rough, rough people. And they say, you will change to our lifestyle. You are enduring all contradictions. You know where you are going. You know the plan you have and the plan God has for you. You'll meet people of another religious perspective. You'll meet people of another doctrinal perspective. But you have that enduring nature. And you remember the words of Jesus. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And so you endure all and every contradiction. All living with an enlightened conscience. Nobody ever becomes a star by throwing the conscience away. Because it's your conscience that monitors your progress, your purity, your stability. Your steadfastness is your conscience that says, yes, you're on the right path. It's your conscience that says, it looks like you're changing. Your chameleon has taken the picture, the painting, and the perspective of the surrounding. It's your conscience that lets you know you're still there. You're still moving on. And so to be a Samuel and to be a star, you are living with an enlightened conscience. And this the Lord will do for you. Yeah. Today. Yeah. I say today. Yeah. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at earnest pursuit. Like Timothy for our task. You see what we're doing here? We link T, Timothy with the task. We link Samuel S with the service. Now we have Timothy. He was trained. He was taught. He was led. He was guided to become a star. How? How was that done? Look at this Timothy. But just in that place before Paul the apostle met him. And Paul, the apostle, said, there is a star locked up inside this young man. And I'm going to bring that star out. And I come to tell you today, there's a star locked up in you. Yeah. And the power of the Lord, and everything done at Calvary, will unlock and release that star out of your heart. What principle, what passion, what was done to make this Timothy a star in his task? His name begins with T, truth and truthfulness. Truth and truthfulness. Paul, the apostle that he associated with had nothing but the truth. Sweet truth, bitter truth, gospel truth, and a kind of truth that makes a man to know where I am, I am not sufficient. And I'm not there yet. And the gospel says, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have, tell me you say is that the gospel listen, G God so loved the world that he gave oh, only, only his only begotten as son that whosoever believeth in him will not P of the gospel, not perish, but have E, everlasting L, life. God used Paul the apostle to show Timothy 
that the gospel I have, the gospel truth, will transform your life. You will never be the same again. What came to his life? Truth and truthfulness. I, in Timothy, integrity and industriousness. Integrity. As Timothy was being taught, so he can be lifted up to become a star. He was told, nobody becomes a star without integrity and without industriousness. Industriousness makes you work hard. You work your fingers to the bone and you don't say, I'm giving up, I'm getting tired. Stars never give up. Modesty and mastery. You see, in life, anything you're doing, you want to become an expert, you want to become a star. How did Timothy become a star? In his field, in his calling, by having modesty, no pride. Thank God I, I get to a higher point than I was yesterday, only by grace, modesty, mastery. Everything he had to do. If you're an athlete, you get mastery over the use of your limbs and the use of your hands and the use and control of your breath as you are aiming at the victory, at the stardom. You have modesty and you have mastery. I put my body on that. Show me a man, show me a woman cannot put, that cannot put a control over his body, over his mouth, over his mind, over his eyes. What he sees, that one will never be. That is the people that have modesty and mastery. Oh, obedience and orderliness. Obedience and orderliness. He remembers, here is what my mentor, my apostle, here is the thing he has taught me. And whether Paul was there or not, he was obedient to that word. He was also orderly. You know, in life, let's start from your table, your desk, orderliness. Because if there is disorderliness there, there's something there, there's a book there, there's a file there, there's a sheet of paper there you're looking for, and it's there. But you can't find because of disorderliness. There's something in the house you need. I need that urgently now. But I cannot find it. Why? Disorderly. There's something in your life you're looking for. And there is an attitude. There is a kind of character, characteristic you're looking for now, but the life is so jumbled together. There's no orderliness. You're not able to find until the time of opportunity passes by. And now, the next year, there is thoroughness and thoughtfulness. You see, in our lives, if you're always thorough, anything you're doing, you don't hurry up and park and go. You do it to finish. You do it to the conclusion, to the logical conclusion. And you are thorough and you are thoughtful. There are many ways I can take. If I take this way, will it lead me there out of the thoughtful? There are many things I can do. If I do this, will it lead me there? Thoughtfulness. And there are, you know, companies and group of people I can join to get this done. If I join group A, what's the advantage? If I join group B, what's the advantage? A. If I join group C, what's the advantage? Advantage if I join a people of the same tribe so we can be speaking the vernacular, my language, 
How does he get me to where I am going? There must be thoughtfulness. H, you see that uh, Timothy, how he came to stardom, honesty and heavenly mindedness. His goal, final goal. The peak of the goal, the final peak, is to get to heaven. And so, anything he was doing, whether eat or drink or do any other thing, whether it's in the morning, afternoon, and evening, he has this. Heaven is my goal. Heavenly mindedness. And then, honesty. Honesty to himself. If I do that, I might deceive me in myself. If I cut corners, am I deceiving my supervisor, supervising my project? If I do plagiarism, that is what other people have done, and I copy that and I put my label on that, do I really have the intelligence and the insight that I'm showing the person supervising my project that I have? No. You have honesty and you have heavenly mindedness. Why? Yieldedness without the unequal yoke. Yieldedness without the unequal yoke. We are aiming for stardom and we're aiming for the stars and we yield. You know, sometimes there are things you don't like, but without unequal yoke, you yield and submit to that because those people around you that I don't like that, I don't like this, but you know, the driver that will drive you to the goal that makes you a star. And so you may not like some idiosyncrasies that he does, but it's at the wheel. Yield without unequal yoke. There may be people in a class with you, and this is their way. And you say, they are not Christians. They are not born again. They are not saved. They are not sanctified. I agree with you. But if there's the timetable that they make and they didn't consider you in the timetable because you like to do this and do this and do that, they didn't consider that in the timetable and the whole class has decided this is what to do at this time, I yield without the unequal yoke. I don't do what they do. I don't drink what they drink. I don't smoke what they smoke. But there are times the regulation and the law and the constitution in your country says this is the way to go. I yield without submitting to the unequal yoke. Timothy then understood this. And he had an earnest pursuit. He was pursuing. He said, what I pursue, I am going to have. You will possess. How can a person possess if he doesn't pursue anything? He does not possess because he's not pursuing. But the man who says, I pursue, I pursue the truth. I pursue integrity. I pursue the right move. I pursue obedience. I pursue thoroughness in everything I do. I pursue honesty and holiness. And I pursue yieldedness. I will see you on the top. Look at number three here. Number three is the essential priority of Andrew and his attitude. The essential priority of Andrew and his attitude. Now, we link Andrew with attitude. Timothy with task. 
and Samuel with service. You see, you must always see the goal where what you are looking for. And what you want in life, and every day of your life, you link this day with destiny. And you say, that's where I'm going. It is that link that helps you now. Andrew and attitude. Now, when we think about the words, starting with A, there is action. There is accomplishment. There is achievement. And there is attitude. Now, I don't know whether you will have the time, but let's try. When you look at the alphabet and you number the alphabets, A is 1, B is 2, 3 is D is, E is, now write the alphabets and go by 1, A, write 1, B, write 2, C, write 3, D, write 4, E, write 5, F, write 6, G, write 7, H, write 8, I, write 9, go on. And as you do that, keep on writing if you've not finished. As you do that, and you give number to each letter. Are you through? Okay, let's start. A, attitude, write one in front. T, what is T? Somebody there has gone to T. What is T? 20. Right attitude and right A1, T20, and T, right another 20. I, what is I? What? Nine. nine, right nine. And then another T, what is T? U, what is U? 21. D, what is D? Four. E, what is E? Five. Now you've written one, twenty, twenty, nine, twenty, twenty one, four, five. Add everything together. One hundred. Attitude in our lives is what makes us to go in the direction of. 100. Achievement. If you have a bad attitude, you don't have gratitude in life. Somebody helps you, no gratitude. Is that all they can do? Is that all the money they can give? Is that all the help they can render? Look, the boy doesn't have gratitude. He doesn't have a good attitude. If there is something to do, a work to do, and by the time you are there for five minutes, I am tired. I cannot do anything anymore. The boy, the girl doesn't have fortitude. Fortitude. And because he doesn't have fortitude, he doesn't have a good attitude. You know, in life, as you look at life, your action, your behavior, your interaction with other people. If you always maintain attitude, good attitude, you even have 100 before you start. You lost your amen. And so we have the essential priorities of Andrew and his attitude. We're looking at John chapter 1. Reading from verse 40, it says, One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. You read all the other references on your own. What do we learn? At the principle and the practice of Andrew. Because 
Andrew is appreciated as a star being a active, active in bringing others to a better destiny. Look at Peter. In his better destiny, it was Andrew, the active attitude and the active style, lifestyle of Andrew in our life. We must be active. Active to be a blessing to others. Active to make others better. Active to make others happier. Andrew, and noted for leading seekers out of the wilderness dilemma. Andrew was noted for that. He was known for that. If in your life, you are not looking at what I can get, but what I can give. You are not looking at what I can obtain for myself, but what I can put in other people's lives. That's what Andrew was noted for. That's how he became a star. And then D. We're talking of Andrew, and we're talking about what he did because he was decisive in taking his own bold decision. Decisive. There are indecisive people, undecided people. Will you do this? I'm still thinking about that. I'm weighing the good and the bad. You come the following week. Will you do it? I'm still thinking. Thinking he has a problem of indecision. And he cannot think of, yes, I will. Are you married? I'm still thinking about that. Has anybody approached you? Yes, but you know, I need to find out everything about them. You'll never find out everything about anybody. You'll never discover everything about everybody. You have to decide by faith. You have to go to God and say, God, is this the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh? In fact, after you've married one year, five years, ten years, you will still not discover everything about your spouse. That's why our people say, that's why our people emphasize, that's why our people tell us that marriage is a school. You keep on learning and learning and learning. Because no matter how long you wait, and no matter how long you weigh each this way and that way, you'll never find out everything you need to find out. And so, if you're a man of indecision, if you're a woman of indecision, you need to come to the fact that God, you hold the future in your hand. And whatever I see now, whatever I know now, is enough for me to take the right decision, led and guided by the Lord. Andrew was decisive in taking his own bold decision. Every decision has to be bold. If it's not bold, you'll be vacillating. Andrew will think about him. And the next letter there are, we're told about this Andrew, that he was reliable always, improving towards a brighter day. Whatever the day looks like today is cloudy. It's about raining. It's lousy. Whatever 
but in that cloudy day and that lousy day and that unpredictable day, Andrew was always reliable, always improving towards that bright, brighter day. And then he empowered while praying for the blessed dynamite, the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It is didn't say we have enough already, enough quality, enough character, enough charisma, enough of everything. This man, Andrew, he was eventually as he waited on the Lord and prayed before the Lord. He was empowered while praying for the blessed dynamite. And then Andrew W walking, walking, walking. It is somebody who will never stop walking. If the Lord going somewhere is walking after him, if his destiny leading in this direction of progress is always walking. You see the people uh, that are that become stars, that's what we call a continuous tense in their lives. They don't stay with I believe in the past, I am believing in the present. They don't say, I walked with him in the past, I am walking with him now. They don't say, I did that before. They say, I am doing, I am doing. There is a continuous tense in their lives. That means they just go on and on. And I'm going to ask you, what have you done this week that will contribute to the bright future and to the goal and to the stardom you're expecting in your life? He was walking with the master without becoming discouraged. Walking of the master walking in the way, walking in the right direction without ever becoming discouraged. That's you. New life. That's you. New progress. Amen. You know, anybody can walk, walk, walk. Somebody's lying down. I will say, get up. Go and do this. I'm tired. I will say, I'm perhaps sick. I am discouraged. All of a sudden, this man lying down there that appears he doesn't have any strength. I cannot walk. I cannot rise. I cannot do anything. All of a sudden, there's a blast in the next house. And then you see, they say fire, fire. And the fire is already almost engulfing everything. <laughs> Look at the man. He jumps up. I thought you said you cannot rise up. Yes, you can. And then he walks out. I thought you said you cannot walk, but he walked out. If you really want to rise and want to walk, let there be an explosion, maybe in your brain, in your mind, in your personality. Let that explosion wake you up. You wake up there. Amen. You rise up there. Amen. You will walk out or out of mediocrity, and you will walk into stardom in Jesus' name. Amen. Some people say, Pastor, when I was younger. If you give me a message like this, I will run. But now, I am old. And I say, my brother, my sister, how old are you? I am 62. Well, look up here. He is about 83. And he is still running. If a man of 80... 81, 82, 83, can run. Man, 57, 61, 63, 
68. Tell me. Tell me. You are 18. You are 22. You are 23. If a man almost 83 years now, in less than two months, it will still running. Boy, 23. Daughter, 25. Say that again. Once you decide, I'll run. You become a star. Yeah. We're coming to number four here. Number four is the exemplary passion of Ruth for repossession. She lost her husband. She's about to lose her home country. But now, for passion. You have passion. I said you have passion. And you will repossess whatever you have lost in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Ruth chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. I will go. Can you say that? Progress stops in your life when the going passion becomes dead. That the passion to go, the passion with a goal, the passion with a drive, the passion with it's a new journey. I'll go. It's a new proposal, I'll go. It's a new uh, achievement, I will go. It's a new responsibility. When the go, go, go passion lives inside you, nothing will ever take you back. Where thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, our Lord. Well, you don't have too much of choice. In a family, they don't eat that. I don't eat that. In my upbringing, we don't sleep in such a place. I won't sleep. I won't lodge there. If you're too choosy, if you're too selective, I cannot do that. You've been spoiled. That you say, I cannot stay there. I cannot drink that water. I cannot eat that food. I cannot sleep in such a room. I cannot stay under ordinary fan. There must be an air conditioner. There must be, there must be, there must be. You're not making it to start on. But when you say, anywhere, everywhere, I will go. I will dwell. I will lodge. The only admission I've got is outside our language comfort. And where they're giving me admission is that other place. And I've read, I've heard, I've known so much about that place. I cannot school there. I cannot go there. You miss your pathway to stardom. But when you say anywhere, everywhere, anytime, every time, look at this. There's a woman so poor, she doesn't have, she didn't have anything to eat. Everything, the fridge, empty. Freezer, empty. Cardboard, empty. House, empty. And so she thought, the only thing I can do is to tell that radio station that this is my condition. Anybody that can uh, give me anything, 
I'm available. Please give me. Look at the story. And one man wanted to play trick on her. And didn't believe in God. And then add a lorry load of different kinds of food stuff. And took it to that radio station. And said, announcer, I have all this truck for that woman that came on your, on your station and said she needed this. Please make sure you deposit everything in her, in her house. And true story. They took the lorry load of all the store and they took it to the, to the woman's house. She was happy. And then they started offloading, offloading, almost as if it will never end. And everything was now placed there. And the woman told the fellow that brought it, thank you, but did not ask. This is the point. Did not ask who sent you to bring all this. When she did not ask, the fellow who brought it said, uh -uh, you didn't even ask who sent all this to you. Oh, the woman said, it doesn't really matter because when God commands, even the devil has to obey. And if the devil has sent you to bring all this, it's God that commanded him. Well, without making a long story short, and without making a short story long, I gained admission to the University of Nevada many, many years ago. And I urged nobody to sponsor me. And I was born again already. Then there's somebody who said, there's no God. Who said, anything you are going to do in life, do by yourself. There's no God. And he instilled that into all of us students. But I didn't take that. If I took that, I would not be born again. But I am born again. I said I. I don't know about you. I said I. I'm born again. I'm born again at admission to university. And he didn't have anybody to sponsor him. But born again understands that everybody on earth is created by only one creator God in heaven. Whether he calls himself a man, a woman, an atheist or a believer, it was created by, tell me, God. by God. So, I said, after I told him, I gained admission, I said, sir, will you sponsor this boy? And he said, yes. And an atheist sponsored me. I went to university, but God used that sponsorship. And I had first class. That first class had led me to being a, a lecturer, being a preacher, being an evangelist, and being everything I am today. Your scholarship is coming. May come from me. May come from people like me. May come from people unlike me. But what I know, the God of heaven will orchestrate everything in your life. Move on. Scholarship is coming. Now, we're talking about the exemplary passion of Ruth for repossession are reaffirming of decision to follow. Reaffirming 
a decision to follow. She said, I am following, no turning back, no turning back. When you make up your mind, day or night, dry season, rainy season, difficult time, easy time, I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You're on your way to stardom in Jesus' name. You, unity with destiny through faith. Unity with destiny through faith. You're always living by faith. I'm going up today. I don't know God was saying it to my life. Going up, but I know I am going up. There's somebody there, you are going up with me. Yeah. We're traveling to higher ground. Yeah. No turning back. No turning back. I tried, but I didn't succeed. I am still, still walking in unity with destiny. I will not change. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. That's where you and I are going. That's where we're getting to. You know, a man who is unstoppable, a woman who is unstoppable, dry season, rainy season, unstoppable, difficulties and trials, unstoppable, you will reach your goal. And then we have tea here and tea. This is still Ruth. And this Ruth is still moving on. You will move on. I will move on. Where are you? As you make up your mind and you say, I'm moving on. I'm going on. And in my life, there will be no turning back. There will be no turning around like Ruth. As you are responsible for taking those decisions, and you're saying, no turning back, no turning back, you'll not be stopped. Amen. You'll not be hindered. Amen. And every direction that God himself as a date for your life, you will be there in Jesus' name. Look at, look at here, chapter 1, and we're looking at verse 17. Ruth chapter 1, we're looking at verse 17. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, when she saw that she was steadfastly minded. That's what we need in our lives. Steadfastly minded. Tell them. Steadfastly minded to go with her then she left speaking unto her when you are steadfastly minded and you say there is no turning back there is no turning back and you trust and you say i am going to go on without deviating and without being blown here or there and you say here i am I am moving on. You will get there in Jesus' name. T, you have the thrust, trustworthiness. Trustworthiness to continue without deviation. And then you say, I continue in fellowship. You'll get there in Jesus' name. H is hard work. Anybody is going to possess and repossess like truth must have that 
hard work. Now she's left her place of origin and she's now in the new place and the hard work continued. When you make hard work, when you make it your lifestyle, when you make it your habit and you say, I am going to continue the same hard working responsibility attribute that I had where I'm coming from, that will continue. It will continue. And you have unity with destiny. And you have trustworthiness without debating. Trustworthiness in devotion. Devotion to whatever you have to do. Whatever the Lord has placed in your way when you say, I'm going to keep on in that trustworthiness and then hard work. Somebody shout hard work. Hard work. Say that again. Hard work. hard work. When you continue with hard work and dutifulness in the field, whatever field of endeavor you find yourself. You say, I know. In this field, in this duty, in this responsibility, if there's anything I need, it is this hard work. And hard work never kills the sleaziness and sleeping and sleeping and sleeping that decreases our energy. But when you have the hard work in your character, in your lifestyle, and you move on and plow on and study on and endeavor to keep every day busy in your calling, in what you are called to, you'll get to that top of stardom in your life in Jesus' name. We come to number five, and that is extraordinary perseverance of soul towards significance. Notice the connection again, soul and significance. There are people who succeed, but they are not significant. But when the success in your life becomes significant and you say, I have success and it leads me to significance, then you are walking in the path of Saul of Tarsus that became significant in history, significant in the Bible, significant in the kingdom of God. Think about any way you want to think about it. It was significant all around. You'll be significant in Jesus' name. Yes. But you know, since that is going to happen, there must be perseverance. What's perseverance? It's doing it and doing it. Sweating and doing it. Tired and doing it. Disappointed and doing it that you persevere and you endure and you go on and on until the finishing time. Until you can say like Paul the Apostle, I have run the race, I have finished the work. And then it says now, there is a crown of righteousness waiting for me. How did Saul, Saul of Tarsus, how did he make it so that he sought to become a star? Yes, he was a person who was selfless and he sacrificed in service. A man who was selfless and he sacrificed in service. You see, that will be in our lives. When 
you sacrifice not for yourself, not for your glory, not for your upliftment, but for others. And you have selfless sacrifice in service. He met the Lord in Acts chapter 9. And in verse 6, he told the Lord, he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? I throw the control of my life in your hand. I throw my past, my present, my future in your hand. His past was forgiven. The present was refashioned. And the future was reassured. And when he said, oh Lord, now I surrender. I surrender all. All of my past. All of my present. All of my future. I surrender all. And he was wanting to follow the Lord at any cost. At every cost. That the reason he came to stardom. When you alive, you are selfless and you sacrifice in service to others, in service to those in your world, in service to those you know and the people you don't know, in service to the Jew and to the Gentile. It is that selfless sacrifice. In service that gets you there. I will be there. I will be there. I don't count the cost. I'm doing too much. No, you have not done enough. I'm going too fast. No, you have not run fast enough. I'm giving up so much. No, you have not given up too much. Make it selfless. And serve everybody. It is that selfless sacrifice in service that will get you there. A, in that name, Saul, is absolute surrender to the Savior. Absolute surrender to the Savior. Surrender without any reservation. Surrender without any modification. Surrender without any adjustment. Everything I have, everything I am, everything I ever hope to get, absolute surrender to the Savior. After all, he surrendered his life for your salvation. He left the glory above for your salvation. He left the comfort of heaven for your salvation. He left everything good, everything glorious, everything splendid, everything in splendor, everything in heaven just for you. And now there must be reciprocal surrender. If he has surrendered all, then you have absolute surrender to the Savior soul unrelenting, strengthening, or saves, unrelenting. He never relented. He never said, look at this Corinthians, the more I love, the less they love me. Okay, full stop. No more. I'm not going in that direction again. No, unrelenting, strengthening of the saves. A threatening, unrelenting support for the saints. Unrelenting help coming from Saul when you're alive. You're unrelenting. And every day, what can I do today? Every week, what can I do this week? Everyone you meet, what can I do for this new contact? So that I will do something that will move him forward. And you are unrelenting. You are unstoppable. You are unbreakable. Whatever happens, you move on and on and on. Unrelenting, straining, 
of the saints and then hell like preaching service to the society. Whatever you're studying, make it relevant to something in society so that you can help the society upgrade the society like bridge the society. Make life easier, better, brighter for your community. That's why Saul of Tarsus, that's why he came to Stardom, Samuel, and then Timothy, then Andrew, then Ruth, and now Saul. Get all those principles together. Get on your face before the Lord and say all those qualities they add. At their own time, I will have each this my own time. And all those practices be upheld to their world. I will uphold all those practices in my world at this time. Lost an amen. Yes. And the progress they made. And the peak, the top of the mountain that they reach, I will reach there. Yes. You will reach there. Yes. There's no way. If you follow everything the Lord has revealed, the same God, the same Almighty God that helped them will help you. Yeah. And very soon, so soon, very soon, I said so soon, yeah. I will see the star. Yeah. From this audience, yeah. I will see you in stardom. Yeah. I will see you up high yeah. on earth. Yeah. And when we get to heaven, I see you. Amen. They that turn, and they that turn others to righteousness will shine bright, shine brighter, shine the brightest in the government of the kingdom of God forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise up now. And each one taking everything we've heard, taking it to God in prayer. Open your mouth, tell the Lord, and say, Lord. I hear the call. I see the goal. I see the destination. I see the place you are taking me to. Ah, minister, I will be there. Anything that will hinder you from being the star that God has ordained that you will be, turn away from that thing. Turn away from that sin, transgression. Abnormality. Turn away from them. They hinder stars from shining. Sin. The sin of the flesh. They hinder stars from shining. Sin. Come on, sin. Fleshly sin. Nothing wanted to hinder Joseph. But said, No. 
I'm running off, I'm moving off to being a star. And stars don't do that. Tell the Lord. Transgression, tell the Lord. I turn away from every form of transgression. Abominations. Anything abominable? In the sight of the Lord, turn away, repent, and say, Lord, I know abominations will deem the star, will kill the star. I turn away. I abandon. I take away from my life everything sinful. Every transgression, everything abominable. Everything ruin us, but character will ruin you. Business will ruin you, backsliding will ruin you. Tell the Lord, turn away from them, turn yourself away from them, and I look up to the Savior, Jesus Christ, the Savior of sinners, he'll save you. He'll forgive you. He'll make you a new creature in Christ. He puts new life, new nature into you. He'll make you a new creature in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Hand over your life to him. And say, Lord, I believe. I believe in Christ now as my Savior, as my Lord. I turn from all the sins of the past and I turn to my Savior. 
the power of God in man. If thou shalt believe in thine heart and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. And everybody said, yeah. It's about an eyes closed. You've discovered you need to turn away from everything that will destroy the star. Turn away from everything that will deem your star. And you want to come up out of that dungeon and come to the top that the Lord himself will recreate you, remold you, and refashion you and the sins of your life that will hinder you from getting to the right side of God. You're ready to forsake them and say, Lord, here I am. I give myself absolutely surrendered unto you. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. God bless you there. Wherever you are, you turn from every sin, you turn from every transgression, you turn from every abomination. You turn from everything that will ruin your chances. You turn from everything of Satan, of society. And say, Lord, absolutely, I surrender myself unto you. Take me, Lord. Take me now, forgive me, change my life, turn me around, make me a new creature in Christ. Raise up that hand, do that right now. Lord, I turn, Lord, I repent, Lord, I give myself completely unto you. Lord, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Savior. Keep up that hand. I'm praying with you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, everyone who has turned to the Savior today, turning away from sin, forgive them in Jesus' name. Cleanse their lives in Jesus' name. Knock out of their lives everything that will destroy their future. Make them new creatures in Christ. New man, new woman, new boy, new girl in the Lord in Jesus' name. Yeah. Affirm that in their life. Yeah. Confirm that in their life. Yeah. And give them the permanent grace of God that will keep them away from everything that will destroy their stardom in Jesus' name. Yeah. But thank you because when it is done, in Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Another amen. amen. A transformational amen. amen. Now, the Lord has revealed all the principles, and with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, you're going to follow those principles in the life of Samuel, in the life of Timothy, in the life of Andrew, in the life of Ruth, in the life of Saul. You say, Lord, helping me. I'm going to follow all those principles 
and practical things I've heard today so that I've become a star in my world. Where are you? Raise up your hand. The Lord will help you. Yeah. They will follow after. Yeah. And like those in Bible days became stars, and like some of us have become stars in the contemporary world, you are the next man. Yeah. You are the next woman. Yeah. You will not be a forgetful hearer. Yeah. Every day you will remember and you walk steadily and steadfastly in the path of stardom in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you and bless you. We know you have revealed this to everyone for a purpose. And we pray the purpose of the revelation will become realization in every life. Amen. Everything that hindered us in the past, we pray you clear away out of our past in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace to become, the power to become, the strength to become, the enablement to become, the steadfastness is in our world. Grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. To the boys, to the girls, to the men, to the women, to the mothers, to the fathers, to everyone who was hurt, we pray. You reproduce stardom in every life, Amen. even from this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen for heaven. And amen for performance. And amen for manifestation in your life. The next time I meet you, I'll meet you as a shiny star in the sky of our world. Amen.